Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Matt, and if you have been following me for a little bit, you probably saw my last video going over the camera sequencer and how to use the camera sequencer to actually build out an animated camera sequence that you can then render out of Maya. So there's two ways of rendering this. One is to create an Uber cam, which I went over in the short, and that creates one camera that just does all the movement and kind of takes care of everything, but in a lot of cases, sometimes that doesn't work, and sometimes we need to do a little bit of adjustment and kind of manual tweaking. So this way is a little bit more convoluted, but again, I tried to make this into a short video and it just, it was not working. So I wanted to give you the best breakdown possible on how to do this without getting rid of any type of content. So let's jump into this. So we have our original scene, and when I play this, you can see that there are four cameras doing their thing, uh, plus the Uber camera, which we can honestly at this point just delete. But let's take a look at how we can actually set this up and render this out with only what we want. So this process can be a little bit complicated because there's four cameras and we have to create a bunch of different render layers. And so if you're not familiar with render layers, we're gonna go over those just a little bit too. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my render layers option and it's right here. So we'll open this up and you get this kind of blank canvas sort of deal. So in here's where we're gonna create our renderable layers. So first off, I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna call this camera one. That's gonna be my first camera. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create one for each one of these. All right, so with those created, now we have to add what are called collections to these. These are going to be groupings of the items in our scene that belong to each render layer. This can be different characters, this can be different objects, whatever you wanna do. But in our case, we're just gonna be rendering the one sort of object and then a camera per layer. So what we wanna do, right click, create a collection. Then in our outliner, we're gonna go and select everything we want, which is gonna be camera one, the plane, the sphere, and if we have one, a light. In fact, let's create a light real quick. Just drag this up here. And we'll give it a little bit of, give it a little bit of power. Okay. Okay, so now, Back to the outliner, select everything that we need that needs to be in that render layer, and then middle mouse drag it into here. You can see immediately that gives everything that we just selected and puts it into this layer. We're gonna do the same thing with each one of these. So we're gonna go create collection. Oop. Create collection, create collection. And you can name your collections too if you need to, but uh, for this purpose, I'm not going to. And then all you're gonna do is deselect camera one, select camera two, drag it into camera two collection, and then camera three, the same. Just select camera three, drag it into the collection, and then camera four, the same. And drag it into the collection. So now each one of these render layers should have everything for minus three cameras. So if we look at this, right now I have my main render layer enabled, or if I try to turn that off, you notice I can't, but I can go down here and I can turn on camera one, and you can see immediately my cameras disappear. So as I cycle through these layers, it's gonna to go to each different camera. This is where we get to use some custom functions. So in Maya, you can render out in cameras or you can render out your render layers. So we're gonna go ahead and open two things. First, we're gonna to go to Windows, Animation Editors, Camera Sequencer. This camera sequencer is important because earlier in the short video that I did, we covered all of the creating of these shots. So each one of these shots is based off of a different camera with different frames. And this is gonna be important because this is what we're gonna to use to set up our frame ranges. So now with that selected, we're gonna go ahead and open up our render settings. Here's our render settings. So go ahead and just change it to JPEG. This is just normally what we wanna do. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is come down here and we're gonna change our frame animation. So we're gonna go name, number, extension, uh, and then this stuff can all stay about the same. This is where it gets a little confusing. So we're gonna have to set up what are called overrides. These overrides are going to basically lock down each layer to do a specific job. So we're already on render layer camera one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my start frame. My start frame starts at zero. So I'm gonna do just one for sake and then 15. If you need to start at zero, you can start at 50 or zero. Down here, we have our renderable camera. We're gonna change this to camera one. That needs to stay that way. So now we're gonna create our override. So in here, we're gonna go start frame, create an absolute override. And then we're gonna do the same thing for our end frame. And we're gonna do the same thing for our renderable camera. This is really important because this is how Maya is gonna know what to actually reference and what to use. So I can kind of minimize layer one, but you can see all this different stuff that that did. We're not gonna tweak any of this because we don't really have to. 
And then we're gonna go to our next render layer. So up here, we're gonna go render layer, camera two. You can see none of this really changed, but our start frame and stuff carried over. So this one, we're gonna do frame 20 to 43. So we're gonna go 20, 43. This is gonna be camera two. And we're gonna go ahead and create those absolute overrides. Same thing for camera three. You can see how that carries over to the next one. So it's actually really kind of nice because it, it does the work for you a little bit. Um, so camera three, we know is 44 to 62 to 62. And that's going to be camera three. And go ahead and create your overrides. And then we'll go to camera four. This is going to be our final camera. And we know this goes 63 to 100. camera four. Go ahead and we'll create those low, those overrides. Okay, that's what we got to do. That's it. That's kind of the setup for this. So now what we can do is make sure that we have a folder set up. So I'm going to be rendering to this test folder on my desktop. It's currently empty. We're going to go to render, render sequence, hit this. And then from here, we have two options that we need to have selected. All render enabled layers and all render enabled cameras. It's gonna make sure that it renders everything that's available. By selecting this first box, this is going to override using each camera that's selected and use each layer that's selected. So this is going to pick every single layer that we have that's currently active. And what we can do in here is we can go to our render layers. So you can see we have all of our layers set up. These are currently renderable. Let's turn off this one. We don't need that. That's kind of our base render layer. We just want these four enabled. And so now if I go here and I hit desktop, test, hit select, and hit render sequence, we can watch this start to spit out our results. So you can see that it already creates a camera folder or a folder for camera one. And it's gonna do the same for each and every camera. And I'll skip ahead just to save you some time, but this is what it's gonna look like. Okay, so now that that's done rendering, we can actually open up our folder again. We can go into camera one, and you can see that we rendered out one through 15, just like we had it configured. Go to camera two, same kind of situation here. So whatever you set in your render layer is going to be output by the renderer. So this is really cool because what this does is instead of rendering every single camera where you render a bunch of unnecessary frames and you take way too much time to do so, you now have full control over how to render out what specified frames were animated, and then you can ignore the rest. So in cases where you don't need the rest of that information, you can totally just do this and save yourself a ton of rendering time. So so again, I tried to compress all of this information into one small video and it just, it, it wasn't working. So I appreciate you if you did come over from either Instagram, TikTok, whatever it was to watch this video. Thank you so much, um, and if you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel, and I will see you guys all in the next video.